Breast cancer is the most common malignancy in women worldwide, and although in the world it's the most common cause of cancer death, it's not in the United States because we do have effective treatments. So when you have effective treatments, what you want to be doing, but it's a very common cancer, what you want to be doing is making those treatments as tolerable as possible and looking for new treatment options for those people where the treatment doesn't work. Because if something works, you must be able to find the next thing that works even better. When I started actually on faculty, I was in the malignant hematology program doing malignant hematology and bone marrow transplant. But then my mother got sick. She developed recurrent breast cancer. And the year she developed recurrent breast cancer was the year I had my first child. And we moved her out and she went back and forth to Boston and San Francisco and helped to take care of her. Uh, and during that time, I did a lot of soul searching about what I wanted to do with my career. And much as I loved the hematology, which is uh, still really a very um, interesting and exciting area to work, I felt like in the long run, thinking about the next decades of my work, that I, my efforts and my passion would be better placed in an area where I could make an impact or help people make an impact. Uh, in a more common malignancy. And so I applied for and was offered a job in the breast cancer program and moved to focus on breast cancer in 1999, nine years after I'd started at UCSF. We actually got interest in scalp going through a patient's interest about a decade ago. And that, uh, you know, through philanthropic funding that came through a uh, contact of Laura Essermans, we were actually, and it's called the uh, Laszlo Tauber Foundation, we were able to fund a pilot trial and then a multi-center trial. Um, we funded our own work with the multi-center trial uh, to study scalp cooling to prevent hair loss from chemotherapy. Turns out it's incredibly important for our patients because when they get diagnosed with mostly early stage, but even metastatic breast cancer, they have a loss of control that's really profound. So we worked with a company called Dignitana and did this trial over a number of years and were able to get FDA clearance for the first scalp cooling device in December of 2015. So when we put the cap on a patient, the first step is to wet their hair, which increases the conduction of the cold air close to the scalp. I mean, we try to do that really thoroughly. We use a water bottle that we get very close to the roots, and especially as women's hair maybe starts to thin um, after a couple of cycles of chemotherapy, it's really important to make sure that everything's really damp when you put the cap on. Um, the cap is a silicone, um, inner cap combined with a neoprene scuba um, material outer cap, which is an insulating layer. And the inner cap has channels inside it um, that refrigerant is run through from the machine. Uh, the cap also has sensors embedded in it that give feedback on what temperature the scalp is so that the machine can auto-correct if it's too warm or too cold. And it keeps the scalp at about three degrees Celsius, although there's a range above and below that of about three degrees that's also um, considered good use temperature. And then there's tubes coming off of the side of the cap that run into the machine um, from which the coolant is circulated. On top of the neoprene cap, it's really important to get a good fit. So the other thing that we're doing when we're putting the cap on is feeling for any place that there might be flatness or um, the, the shape of the silicone cap is kind of like an egg and nobody's head is really shaped that way. So there's going to be deviations there and you want to know where they are because that's a place that you need to strap it down even tighter. Um, any place there's an air bubble is a place a bald spot might develop because it's not as cold as the rest of the scalp. So we have a whole contraption of different straps, um, pads, accoutrements that we use to try and fit the cap more tightly in certain areas and depending on the shape of someone's head we would use a different arrangement and then we document that in their medical records so that next time they come in we know oh we had like a yellow strap here and then a blue strap this way and like padding on top. And it's really the efforts of our group uh, that led to the trial that led to the clearance. I went to the FDA and that's very exciting for us. It's a huge, uh, I think, um, leap forward in support of care for patients with breast cancer and for patients with other kinds of solid tumors as well.